have seen that metal casting is the primary manufacturing process. In fact, it was the boldest manufacturing process. In the earlier episodes, we have seen the principle of metal casting and the different terms that come across in the metal casting process. We have also seen the classification of the metal casting process. The metal casting process is broadly classified into four types, conventional molding process, second one chemical sand molding process, third one permanent mold process and the fourth one special casting process. And again the conventional molding process it is divided into green sand molding, dry sand molding and flaskless molding. We have learned this in the previous episodes and the chemical sand molding process they are classified as shell molding, sodium silicate molding and no bake molding. These also we have learnt in the previous episodes and in the permanent mold process the material is made up of a metal or an alloy. Again this is classified as gravity die casting and pressure die casting. This we have learnt in the previous episodes. And the fourth classification of the casting process is the special casting process. There are mainly nine types of special casting process. One is centrifugal casting process, second one investment casting process, third one continuous casting process, fourth one plaster molding, fifth one squeeze casting, sixth one evaporative pattern casting, seventh one vacuum sealed molding, eighth one ceramics shell molding and ninth one slush casting. Among these in the previous episode we have seen the centrifugal casting, investment casting and the continuous casting. In the centrifugal casting we use metallic mold and the metallic mold is rotated at a predetermined speed. At that time we pour the molten metal. In the case of the green sand molding or in the other casting process the molten metal is poured into the cavity by virtue of gravity. Here the molten metal is occupying the cavity by virtue of the centrifugal force falling on it. Because of the centrifugal force falling on it the metallic the molten metal is occupying the mould cavity and the mould continues to rotate until the molten metal solidifies. When the molten metal solidifies we stop rotating and we eject the casting outside. Again we have seen that this centrifugal casting is subclassified into three types. One is true centrifugal casting, the other one is semi centrifugal casting and the third one is the centrifuging. One of the advantages of the centrifugal casting process is the casting yield is 100 percent in most of the cases. And we have seen the investment casting which we call it as precision casting also. We also call it as last wax process. This process is used where extreme precision is important, where extreme tolerance is important, extreme dimensional tolerance is important we use this process. Here we use wax as the pattern material and its advantages and its limitations and applications we have seen in the earlier episode. We have also seen the continuous casting in which the casting is continuously made. We have seen that there are three types vertical continuous casting, horizontal continuous casting and continuous casting in travelling mold. We have seen the applications of this process and its advantages and limitations. In continuous casting also the casting yield is 100 percent. So, among the special casting process we have learned centrifugal casting, 
we have also learnt investment casting and we have also learnt continuous casting. Today let us see the plaster moulding. Plaster moulding. Here the mould material is plaster of Paris. It is made up of gypsum or calcium sulphate. That is the plaster of that is the mould material. In the case of the conventional casting process, the mould material is sand. In the case of the die casting, the mould material is a metal or an alloy. In the case of the investment casting, the mould material is wax. Here the mould material is plaster of Paris. And what is the pattern made up of? In most of the cases, the patterns are made up of aluminum alloys brass or zinc alloys. These are widely used. Sometimes plastic is also used and wood very rarely used. And types of plaster molding. One is conventional plaster molding process. Second one the foamed plaster process and the third one the Antioch process. Let us see this process in detail. First, let us see the conventional plaster molding process. The conventional plaster molding process. So, let us take a small example. So, let us say this is the casting to be made, this kind of casting we want to make. So, this kind of pattern we will be using, this kind of preferably a metallic pattern will be used. And next we have to prepare the slurry by mixing plaster of Paris with water. Plaster of Paris is to water that ratio is 5 is to 8 means 5 par parts of plaster of Paris and 8 parts of water. We will mix plaster of Paris with water and the we make a slurry. The slurry looks like this. So, this is the plaster of Paris slurry. Next one, we have to sprinkle talcum powder over the pattern to get a fine finish over the cavity surface. Next one, apply parting agent which is the tincture of mold soap over the pattern. So, this helps us for parting purpose so that the plaster will not be sticking to the pattern. Next one, place the pattern inside the molding box. Here we are, this is the molding box and here we are placing the pattern. In most of the cases, we have to split the pattern. One like uh, the way we do in the conventional sand casting process, one half will be molded in the drag, other half will be molded in the cope. However, sometimes if we split the pattern, alignment will become a problem. If the upper half of the pattern and the lower half of the pattern are not properly aligned, it will become a problem. The casting will be defective. So, if it is difficult to make a split pattern, we instead of making a split pattern, what we can do is, here we have taken a bed of clay. Over the bed of the clay, we have just pressed the pattern, so that half of the pattern will be going inside the bed of the clay. Now, over this in the remaining surface, we will fill with the plaster of Paris. Now, pour the plaster sari over the pattern in the drag. Now, we are pouring the plaster of sari. Inside there is a pattern and uh, that pattern is pressed over a bed of clay and the plaster sets in few minutes. Then we have to separate these boxes. We have clamped these boxes, these boxes are to be separated. We can see here, this is the plaster region. Here this plaster we have poured and this is the bed of clay where we have pressed the pattern. Next one, pour the slurry in the cope box also. 
means already one drag pad box is already prepared over that means we are drag box is prepared over a bed of clay now that bed of clay will be removed now we will make the system upside down so that the portion of the pattern which was pressed in the bed of clay will be upside now in that position now you pour the slurry in the coke box and after 15 minutes the slurry will be setting it will become hard again we have to separate the boxes after separating the boxes the two boxes joined together will be looking like this remember inside there is pattern so far we have not withdrawn the pattern now there is a possibility that little amount of slurry plaster slurry might have run across the sides that slurry we have to break off making a small hammer using a small hammer and a chisel we have to break off we have to scrap off that small amount of slurry that might have run over the sides of the plaster molds next one we have to separate these two plasters plaster molds yes we have separated here and inside there is the pattern now we have to withdraw this pattern carefully so that the cavity will not be damaged yes we have withdrawn the patterns now we have to bake these plaster molds in a oven for 120 at 120 degrees for about 20 hours this takes time but this is required to impart required strength to the plaster molds next after baking is over assemble the molds and clamp them then pour the molten metal into the cavity the molten metal flows into the cavity and it fills and after some time the molten metal solidifies after solidification is over next we have to remove the solidified casting and for that purpose we use high pressure water jet using high pressure water jet we remove the solidified casting from the plaster molds so we have seen the different steps involved in the plaster molding process how to make the plaster mold and how to pour the molten metal how to bake the plasters plaster molds we have seen and let us see the advantages of the conventional plaster molding process one is complex shapes can be cast yes even the example that we have studied is a complex shaped one complex shapes can be cast and it offers excellent surface finish in the case of the conventional sand casting process the mold is made up of sand and because of the sand the surface of the cavity will, will be rough and the casting finally obtained will be rough but here the mold material is made up of plaster the plaster creates a fine surface finish inside the cavity the result is we get excellent surface finish on the solidified casting so minimum machining is required fine details can be obtained the casting may be big at somewhere small details may be there which may be small if it is a sand casting process the molten metal may not flow inside that small detail but in this case the molten metal flows inside the small details and these small details can be successfully cast thin sections can be cast successfully thin sections as small as 0.6 mm can be cast and 
good dimensional tolerance. In the case of the conventional hand casting process, the size of the casting that we finally obtain will be more than the size of the casting which is actually required. For that, we have to machine it which requires efforts and which requires time. Here, that problem is not there. The final size of the casting we obtain will be the size of the casting actually required. So, it possesses good dimensional tolerance and the setting of the mold takes only 15 times, 15 sorry 15 minutes. Of course, we bake it for few hours, but setting takes only 15 minutes. Now, let us see the limitations of this conventional plaster molding process. This process is not suitable for making ferrous castings. Why? Because in the gypsum that is in the plaster of Paris, sulphur is present. This sulphur reacts with iron and it leads to defects. So, the plaster of Paris mold cannot be used for making iron castings. It is used only for non-ferrous castings. This process is more expensive. In the case of the conventional sand casting process, what is the mold made up of? It is one made up of sand. This sand is not so costly, but here the mold material is plaster and it is costly and that can be used only once. In the case of the sand casting process, the sand can be used again and again, but in the case of the plaster of, plaster of Paris process, the plaster can be used only once and it is very costly. So, the whole process is very expensive and this process is not suitable for making large castings. Maximum we can make up to 7 cages, say the range is 30 grams to 7 cages. Yes, I have already told this plaster is not reusable only once. In the case of the conventional sand casting process, we can use the sand again and again here only once. So, that increases the cost of production and baking cost is extra. Yes, after the plaster is set, we have to bake it for about 20 hours. For 20 hours, we have to keep the plaster mold in an oven and we have to run the oven for 20 hours that increases the cost of production. Next one, thermal conductivity of the plaster is poor that is well known. Then what happens when we pour the molten metal? It takes more time for solidification. So, the process becomes delayed. This, this is another drawback of the plaster of Paris process. And finally, the regarding the permeability. In the conventional sand casting process, we have seen one important property that is the permeability. The molding sand possesses a property called permeability, where the molding sand allows hot gases to pass through it. Yes, when we pour the molten metal, hot gases are generated. These hot gases will be passing through the molding sand. So, that is the permeability property. Here, in the case of the plaster molding, the permeability of the plaster is very poor. And when we pour the molten metal, if the hot gases are generated, how they will escape? Sometimes they may be stuck up inside the mold cavity and results in defects. They result in gas defects. Next one, let us see the, uh, the second type of the plaster molding that is the foamed plaster process. In fact, this is an improved version of the conventional plaster molding process. One of the drawback or the major drawback of the conventional plaster molding process is the permeability is very poor. 
gas defects arise because of this poor permeability. So, in this process, in this improved process, we will make a, an attempt to improve the permeability of the mold. Let us see how we will do this. First one, prepare the slurry by mixing plaster of Paris with water. Plaster of Paris is to water ratio is 5 is to 8, means plaster of Paris 5 parts and water 8 parts. Next one is blow the air into the slurry. Half of the volume should be filled with air bubbles. So, this is very important. Half of the volume should be filled with the air bubbles. At this stage, pour the slurry with the bubbles over the pattern in the drag. Slurry sets in, a, in an about some 20 or 30 minutes. Next, repeat the process for the coke box also in the same way, the way we have done for the conventional plaster molding process. The slurry sets in about 30 minutes. Next, bake the molds in oven at 120 degrees for about 20 hours. Now, what happens is we have used the slurry with air bubbles. We have poured the slurry over the pattern where air bubbles are present. Now, under this stage when it is allowed to dry, under this stage when it is allowed to bake, there will be permeability. The gas bubbles will be dried up and they will leave some porous holes in the plaster mold. So, the permeability is increased. Next, assemble the molds and pour the molten metal. So, in this process, we are increasing the permeability of the system. Advantages of this formed plaster process, good permeability, yes that is what we have aimed. We have made attempt to increase the permeability of the mold and gas defects will not arise. And because we are using additional water, not additional water, we are using air bubbles, the premature setting of the slurry does not arise. Disadvantages of the foamed plaster process, the strength of the mold is reduced. Yes, half of the volume of the plaster slurry is filled with the air bubbles. Half of the pattern, half of the mold are, is filled with the air bubbles. Of course, when we dry the system, these air bubbles will leave porous holes means the strength of the mold is reduced. Setting time is more and maximum weight in the case of the conventional plaster molding process, maximum weight is about 7 kg. Here, the maximum weight of the casting that we can make is about 5 kg. The maximum weight has come down. Next one, the third process of the plaster molding process that is the Antioch process. This is further improved version of the conventional plaster molding process. Yes, one of the drawback or the major drawback of the conventional plaster molding process is the poor permeability. This we have overcome by using by or by blowing air, air bubbles. But the drawback is the maximum weight of the casting that we could make has come down. Only 5 cages can be cast. So, still there is a need to enhance the properties so that even larger castings can be made. So, in this process, we use fine silica sand. In the case of the conventional plaster molding process, the mold is made up of plaster of Paris and water, that is all. Here, we are using fine silica sand, very fine silica sand, fresh silica sand 50 percent and the gypsum that is the plaster we are using 40 percent, talc 8 percent, Portland cement, sodium silicate about 2 percent. So, these are the solid ingredients. 
Next we add water, water should be 50 percent of these solid ingredients, then we make the slurry. Process, the step by step let us see, pour the slurry, first we have to make the slurry with the ingredients discussed above and pour the slurry over the pattern in the drag. In about 7 minutes, this plaster develops good strength, it takes only 7 minutes for setting. Next, pour the slurry over the pattern in the cope box also. Again, in an about 7 minutes, this plaster sets and develops good strength. Next one, withdraw the patterns from the plaster molds. Dry the molds for 6 hours, then we have to bake them in an oven for 15 hours. Next step, assemble the molds and pour the molten metal. Yes, we are pouring the molten metal. We, here we can see the pour molten metal and these are all the molds. Advantages of the Antioch process, improved strength of the mold. So, larger castings can be made. Next advantage is incorporation of chills is easy. What are these chills? In the case of the uh, conventional sand castings, these chills are widely used. When the, when the molten metal is poured into the cavity, during solidification, the solidification should start from the walls of the mold, slowly it should propagate towards the razor and razor should solidify at the last. So, that is the progressive solidification or the directional solidification. The riser should solidify last means until the last minute riser should uh, there should be liquid metal in the riser. But sometimes what happens is due to the uneven thicknesses of the castings, sometimes the part which is away from the riser it may be in liquid state because its thickness may be more, but the part, the section which is away from the riser should solidify first. Because its thickness is more, it is in liquid state, but a section which is nearer to the riser, it is solidifying first. Now, we have to regulate this solidification. The section which is away from the riser should solidify first at any cost. And if its thickness is more, we take some steel blocks which we call them as chills and we place them in the mold, so that the heat will be dissipated to these steel blocks. The steel blocks extract heat from this casting portion and ensure that that section will be solidified fast. So, these are the chills. So, in the case of the conventional plaster molding process, incorporation of these chills is very difficult, but in this Antioch process, incorporation of the chills is easy. Again, another drawback of the conventional plaster molding process is the conductivity, the thermal conductivity of the mold is very poor that results in slow, slower solidification of the casting. The casting takes long time for solidification, but here what we are doing? We have added 50 percent of this fine silica sand. The thermal conductivity of the silica sand is more than the plaster, hence faster solidification. And another drawback of the conventional plaster molding process is the poor permeability, because of which gas defects arise. Here what we are doing? We are using fine silica sand and fine silica sand possess permeability Be and because of this permeability, gas defects will not arise. And finally, this Antioch process offers good mechanical properties to the casting and it has got limitations. The Antioch process has got limitations or poor sand recovery. 
in the conventional sand casting process after solidification is over we break the mold that sand can be used to make another mold to make another casting and after solidification again we will break it again we can use that sand for making another casting that cycle can go on for making several castings but here what we are doing we are mixing 50% of this silica sand with plaster and it is very very difficult to take that sand back so the recovery of the sand is very poor and the plaster cannot be used again it is very difficult to extract the sand which is mixed with the plaster after we break the mold so the sand cannot be used ultimately the process is expensive applications of the plaster molding used to cast brass bronze aluminum magnesium manganese and their alloys aircraft parts next it is used to cast cams molds for plastic and rubber industry quick prototype parts so this is an important application of the plaster of paris process whenever we are making a new component first we make prototype initially we make a prototype and we evaluate its performance and we feel that some modification is required immediately some components we change the design and immediately by casting process we have to make the components when we are making a component uh, prototype there is no much time for machining if we make these components by conventional sand casting process they take lot of time and the time required for evaluation of the prototype will be more for machining time is required but here the components are made by plaster of mold process so there is no machining is required minimum machining is required we get excellent surface finish good dimensional tolerance so immediately we change the design and we get the modified component again we test the prototype again some modification may be required immediately we change the design and we make the casting by plaster of paris molding process and we get the casting so in the evaluation of the prototype this process helps us so that the casting or the component can be modified quickly and it can be evaluated and finally this process is also used for making art castings and here we can see this process is being used for making statue here they have used the pattern a, the human's face that is the pattern and over that they are pouring the plaster of paris and a bronze statue will be made so this is also used for making art castings so among the special casting process we have seen centrifugal casting we have seen investment casting we have seen continuous casting and we have seen plaster molding next let us see the squeeze casting squeeze casting so this is also known as liquid metal forging so this process is a method in which the casting and forging technologies are combined in the case of the casting process the process of giving the shape to the metal is easy because we are making a cavity and we are pouring the molten metal into the cavity so giving the shape is easy but the mechanical properties are not so good on the other hand we can also give a required shape to a metallic component by forging but for that forging operation we have to use extensive pressure but the me mechanical properties are very good 
So, why do not we mix these two? So, that the mechanical properties will be good, so that the external pressure which we have we are going to apply will not be so high. So, this is the concept of the squeeze casting. Let us see the step by step. Here we can see this is the, the die and here we can see a cavity and this is the ladle in which molten metal is present. So, this is the lower die and this is the upper die and here we are pouring the molten metal. Yes, the cavity is filled with the molten metal and in the next stage after the molten metal is poured into the cavity, the upper die is pressed over this lower die and the liquid metal is trapped between the lower die and the upper die. Now, what is happening? This is similar to forging. In forging, we press, here also we are pressing. In the case of the casting process, we pour the molten metal and allow it to take the shape. Here also we are pouring the molten metal. So, this is the mixture of casting and forging. And after some time, the casting is solidified. Then using ejector pins, we are taking the casting outside. So, these are the important steps involved in squeeze casting. Advantages, fine details can be produced, which is not possible in the case of the conventional sand casting process and shrinkage defects are very less. Next one, high production rates, compared to die casting, the production rate is very high. And here we are not using any gating system, no sprue, no riser. Then what happens? The casting yield is high. What is casting yield? Casting yield is the weight of the casting multiplied by 100 whole divided by the weight of the poured metal. Yes, the weight of the poured metal is more than the weight of the casting. In the case of the conventional sand casting process, if the casting weight is say 10 cages, there will be molten metal will be solidified in the sprue passes, molten metal will be solidified in the gating system, molten metal will be solidified in the riser. So, the poured metal will be more than 10 cages if the weight of the casting is 10 cages. So, weight of the poured metal is always more than the weight of the casting. So, this is the casting yield weight of the casting multiplied by 100 and whole divided by the weight of the poured metal. This casting yield in general for the sand casting process, it will be between 70 to 80 percent. And here the casting yield is high because there is no gating system. So, this is a profit for us, this decreases the cost of production and produces high quality surfaces and what about the solidification? Solidification is rapid. So, that results in fine grain size and mechanical properties are improved. In the case of the forging, yes, we get good mechanical properties, but the external force that we apply will be more. For that, we have to use hydraulic presses, they are very costly. So, the production cost goes up in forging, but here we are not applying extensive pressure, moderate pressure is enough. So, that decreases the cost of production, but still we are getting good mechanical properties like in forging. So, these are the typical uh, applications. So, this is mainly used for making aluminum and magnesium alloys. So, these are the typical components made by squeeze castings. We can see so many shapes 
all these shapes are made by squeeze casting. So, we have seen among the special casting process, we have seen centrifugal casting, we have seen investment casting, we have seen continuous casting, we have seen plaster molding and we have also seen squeeze casting. Next let us see the evaporative pattern casting. Evaporative pattern casting. This process is also known as expendable pattern casting. This process is also known as last foam casting. And here the pattern is made up of polystyrene or the styrofoam. Let us see the step by step procedure in this evaporative pattern casting. First we have to this is the pattern this is the polystyrene pattern means this kind of shape we want to produce. So, first we have to dip the pattern in gas permeable refractory slurry then we have to dry it. Then hard shell is created fine and hard shell is created around the pattern. Next one place the pattern in a box. So, this is the pattern and this is the box. Next one we are putting the sand fine sand <coughs> we are placing around the pattern and we are packing the pattern inside the sand. Now, the sand support is created the sand will be filled up to this level. <coughs> Next one at this stage we pour the liquid metal yes this is the liquid metal and we are pouring. Now, what happens is as we pour the liquid metal it goes and falls on the pattern the polystyrene pattern immediately the polystyrene pattern evaporizes. It evaporizes and that evaporated pattern it escapes in the form of gas from the small cavity. <coughs> As we keep pouring the molten metal the pattern keeps on melting and evaporate, evaporizes and it escapes. Finally, the entire pattern will be burning and it will be evaporized and it will be escaping from the cavity and the molten metal is filled with the cavity means we are replacing the molten metal with the pattern material. Next after some time the molten metal solidifies. Next yes uh, around the uh, this polystyrene pattern there is a shell we have created a shell and that shell has got a fine surface finish inside and because of that even the solidified casting will have a good surface finish. Now, that shell we have to break and the part comes out. So, these are the important steps involved in evaporative pattern casting. Advantages of evaporative pattern casting. These are used for precision castings and this process can be used for ferrous and non-ferrous metals also. The plaster molding cannot be used for ferrous castings, but here this process can be used for ferrous and non-ferrous metals. We obtain high dimensional accuracy in this process. Next one thin sections can be cast and also complex shapes can be cast. And another advantage is only one flask in the case of the conventional sand casting process we are using two flasks one is the drag and another one is the cope. So, sometimes if this drag and the cope are not aligned properly the resultant casting will be defective and the, that casting has to be rejected that problem is there and here that problem does not arise only one flask. So, molding is easy. 
in the case of the conventional sand casting process the drag box and the coke box should be aligned carefully for that skilled workers are required here only one flask the process is easy even semi skilled worker can do this job see yes, few steps are involved the process is not complicated and no need to mix the binders and other additives in the case of the conventional sand casting process we are mixing clay we are mixing some other addit additives <coughs> here there is no need next one multiple castings can be combined in one mold to increase the pouring efficiency yes if the sizes of the castings are small so these can be combined with a central sprue the way we do in the case of the investment casting and more castings can be cast at a time using a central sprue so this is another advantage by this we can increase the casting yield and we can decrease the cost of production yes another advantage the need for skilled labor is reduced in the case of this conventional sand casting process and other precision casting process skilled workers are required sometimes it is difficult to get skilled workers even if we get the skilled workers we have to pay them more that increases the cost of production here even a semi skilled worker can do this job that decreases the cost of production and in the case of the conventional conventional sand casting process the metal is solidified in this proof metal is solidified in the gating system metal is solidified in the riser these are the unwanted projections after solidification after breaking of the molding we have to cut this and we have to machine it this is known as fettling this fettling increases the cost of production for that extra labor is required extra time we have to spend finally the process will be more expensive here there is no sprue no gating system no riser so finally there will be no need for fettling because there is no fettling that decreases the cost of production machining is minimized next one the sand can be reused in the case of the plaster molding the sand cannot be used that's the drawback of the plaster molding that increases the cost of production in the case of the plaster molding but here we can reuse the sand only little portion may not be useful about 5% that can be neglected but the sand can be reused and what about the capital investment what are the equipments required costly equipments are not required so the capital investment is low means the cost of production will be less so this is another advantage of this process applications of evaporative pattern casting this process is used to manufacture crank shafts for engines this process is used for making aluminum engine blocks and manifolds etc so in this episode we have seen the plaster molding the squeeze casting and the evaporative pattern casting we have seen that the plaster molding is classified into conventional plaster molding process the formed plaster process and the antioch process so there are three sub classifications of the plaster molding we have also learnt in this episode the squeeze casting which is the mixture of casting and forging so which we also call it as liquid metal forging and we have also learnt in this episode evaporative pattern casting which is also known as expendable pattern casting which is also known as 
लास्ट फोम कैस्टिंग थैंक यू Thank you.